Hi, welcome back to episode three of our journey learning through Hanukkah and how Chazal, how the ancient rabbis see the threads tying literally from the beginning of creation to the end of time and every day of our lives linked to Hanukkah. What we've learned so far is that Hanukkah ties into the darkness at the beginning of creation and the discovery or God's creation of light and the light of Hanukkah is going to link to that. We've also discovered that the rabbis call this exile, that even the Greeks were dominating us, but we were actually in the land of Israel and for a large time even had a lot of autonomy and had the temple and it's still called exile because you can have an internal exile, an exile where the Jewish people were collapsing and turning into a Hellenized Greek civilization that eventually le- became a part of the actual conflict and turned into physical strife. And then we learned the roots of that from so many directions of Hanukkah go all the way back to the tragic Torah biblical episode of the sale of Yosef. And we saw all, some of the links to Hanukkah. There's many, many more. We only have time to explore some, but Ten Lechacham Yechamoy, you can research much, much more and see through different midrash and different sources, much more to say about all that. And what we saw is the brothers were afraid that Joseph, that Yosef had within him the capacity to easily turn to idolatry, the ability to manipulate, to control, charm, beauty. And we saw that, in fact, historically, It was Yosef's descendants and Yosef's energy that was often associated with idolatry, connected to the first golden calf, connected to the later golden calves, connected to the schism that rips apart the kingdom, connected to the whole idolatry of the northern kingdom. These are all linked to the wrong side of what can go wrong with Yosef, with Joseph's attributes of beauty, of charm, and so on. And that's what the brothers were afraid of in him. They'd already seen his or heard his dreams that everyone's going to bow to him. They already thought this is very, very dangerous stuff. And yet the brothers are wrong. It's very clear in the Torah story they are wrong. By the end, they do have to come and bow in front of him. He is the one who's able to sustain them in, in exile in Egypt. Right? He is the one who gets called Sadiq, the righteous. He is the one that Gemara says in Baba Basra, right, that in fact, the end of history, the Messianic era can't happen except through Yosef. The Medrash that says, uh, the Medrash Tan Chuma, in Vayeshev, that actually said, Rashi actually brings it, the great commentary of the Torah brings it when Jacob, when Jacob, who himself had been through a dark exile, right, he has to leave the land of Israel, fleeing his brother Esau who wants to kill him. And, he, and as he leaves, it says that, that the Kivar Shemesh, the sun sets. And in fact, he goes almost into this dark exile outside the land of Israel and he builds his whole family up. And only when Joseph, when Yosef is born, is he ready to try to re-enter the land? And as he comes back into the land, it says that the light comes back, the day comes back, the dawn is there to shine as he's ready to enter. But he doesn't enter until Yosef is born, until Joseph is born. And the Medrash, the rabbinic writing says this, that it's, it's a comparison. He sees Esau and he sees his brother and all the mighties accumulating. And it's like this camel coming down the road with flax and it's going to, you know, down a very narrow alleyway. It's going to smash up all the shops and all the stuff they've got outside. And it's like this terrifying, this Esau power is going to come. This civilization is too powerful for us. It's going to swallow us up and destroy us completely until one person comes on with a little flame, lights the flax and it all burns and the camel can walk down and do no harm whatsoever. And it compares it to Aesop is like the big camel, the, the kind of what becomes later on uh, the civilizations that put us in exile. They're like this camel with his flax. They're going to destroy everything we have completely, except that Joseph, Yosef is compared biblically. In fact, the, the biblical metaphor, the prophetic metaphor is that Yosef is that Aesop is like this straw and Yaakov is like the flame. But Joseph is like the spark that can ignite the flame. So Yosef, all this beauty and charm somehow is that which is going to save us in exile. It's that which is going to help bring the messianic era. Right? It won't happen without him. And there's many links actually that hint that the story of Yosef and his brothers, that Yosef, Joseph himself, is actually teaching them the lessons that will become the lessons of the Hanukkah story. When the brothers come down to Egypt for a second time, and he, they don't yet know that he is Joseph, he's Yosef, and he sets them up for the meal, and it says, tavach that he in fact has prepared food for them. So there's a beautiful B'nai Sosa, Hasidish source that says, uh, that speaks about Hanukkah, that says, uh, the, the gematria, the numerical weight of the words Tavach, Tevach, are this, is actually 44. The 36 lights of Hanukkah plus the eight, eight nights where we each light an extra shamash. If you talk about the lights that we actually light, we light the same number. What's he saying? He's saying the meal that was the brothers suddenly recognizing how important Joseph is, is the meal that hints at the message of Hanukkah. How? What is the depth behind that? So we see that Joseph is the character without whom we cannot successfully navigate exile. 
We couldn't successfully navigate the exile in Egypt. We won't be able to success successfully navigate the long exile that we go through as a Jewish people of centuries of persecution and so on without the power of the energy of spiritual dynamics of Yosef of Joseph. That's being hinted right at the beginning. By the way, the last few letters of Vahachin is also the letters of the word Hanukkah for those who want to look up the verse and look it up yourself. But that's what's happening. And Yosef is the one who can light, ignite that spark, which is reminiscent of the lights of Hanukkah that can burn all these powerful forces that seem they're going to crush us all together. And in fact, unbelievably, the Talmud in Bava Kama, the one time that we discuss in all the writings, the mission of the rabbinic law, the actual lights of Hanukkah, is, is it talks like this. It says that if a camel is coming down a narrow alleyway laden with flax, oh, that's a familiar metaphor, right? The same one the rabbis used to describe the exile. The camel's coming down laden with flax and it destroys or catches fire or creates a fire on somebody's candles. If the candle was inside the shop and the flax pushes beyond its border, then the owner of the flax is liable. You don't walk down that little alleyway if your stuff's going to push into shops and knock out flames and create fires. But if the shop owners put their candle outside, they're liable. What are you doing putting a light outside into the marketplace where camels and men walk with flax? But if it's the light of Hanukkah, then it's okay. As, see, the light of Hanukkah is the light that's allowed to burn down the flax. Isn't that unbelievable? The halacha, the laws of the candles of Hanukkah are the same as the description the rabbis have of the light of Joseph that burns the flax of exile that comes to destroy us. In other words, Yosef himself is the light of Hanukkah. So amazingly, the brothers want to sell him because they detect within him the power of Greece. And somehow in his charm and charisma, there's something different than just charm and charisma. It's not control and manipulation. It can become that and it's dangerous. But Yosef has something else that makes him the tzaddik, that makes him actually the antidote to the darkness of exile. And if you look carefully at all the stories with him, an unbelievable thing, he never actually manipulates anybody. His life is one of constant care and concern for everybody. His chain, his charm comes because from the word go, he's looking after the poorest people and the weakest people and not gaining anything from it. He would bring, says the verse, the psukim at the beginning of Ayesha, the beginning of the story of his sale. He would look after Hunar. He would be the, the child with the Bnei Bilha, Bnei Zilpah, the, the sons, the brothers who were naturally more rejected. He would be caring for them. When he goes into exile, everything he does, he tries to do the best for everybody. When he's thrown into the pit of prison, rather than moan and despair, he looks at people and sees their sad and says, what's the matter? What's wrong? He's so deeply caring for everybody. He's never manipulating anybody. In fact, when the brothers come and he asks personal questions, the Midrashim say, it's almost like they said to him, wow, so do you want to marry one of our, of our sisters? Like, well, what's so personal? Later, they come back to their father. He says, why did you mention there's another brother who now Yosef wants to bring down to Egypt? Because he asked us these personal questions. He, he cared about us. He cared. And in fact, he accuses them of being manipulators. He says, you're spies. Look at you. Right? Obviously, the subtext is you sold your brother into slavery because you were scared of his manipulation. You're now coming to Egypt, but really you're manipulating us because you're trying to find your brother and you're pretending to not be related. You're, you're playing all the games over here. Uh, and the, so the Pirkei de Revelyaza says, for example, that when people came down to be fed in the famine, he spoke to everybody in their own language. In other words, he could connect to everybody. Every one of us has a, a language we speak, but we also have our own personal language. And he could connect to each person. He cared so deeply about each person, he could speak the language of their soul, the language of that person themselves. And in the blessing Yosef gets is that he's the Birch Shemaim al Birch Tohem, the blessing of the connection of heaven and earth. The Talmud, the Gemara in Tarnas says, the thing that connects heaven and earth, the spiritual force is called Ridia. It's an angel that has the form. And again, we said in the earlier, angel, angel doesn't mean like a baby with wings. Angel means a connection device, like a, a neuron in the brain is, 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 is an angel of consciousness or like an algorithm. It's, except these are live conscious things flowing the will of God, the programs that are bringing it into the world. That program has the form, if a prophet sees it, of an eagle, of a calf. Yosef is that very force that connects heaven to earth. Yosef is the force that can connect people to one another. Yosef is Joseph is that force of deep connection that never manipulates, that in every single case, his charm comes precisely because of his innocence and his love and his care for everybody. In fact, the one time he tries to get something out of a relationship, he gets punished for. 
And the rabbis all the way back from the Ramban, the medieval commentators asked, why is Yosef given an extra two years of jail for, for telling the butler and baker, you know, I've given you the interpretation of your dreams. Uh, I've told you, you, the, the, the winemaker, you're going to go to freedom. Please remember me to Pharaoh and tell him I've been put in jail for the crime I never committed. Please. And for that, he's thrown for two more years. For a normal person, that's the right thing to do. I mean, there's different answers given by the different commentaries, but one idea you could pick up on it. For a normal person, that's the right thing to do. But Yosef who's got such deep connection to everybody, the brothers were right. If he did use his relationships to get anything from them, it would be incredibly dangerous. And so he has to always not do that. That's who he is. His connection to the world, his force of of, of that which allows everybody to feel connected to him is precisely because of his deep care for everybody. Now, how does that deal with Hanukkah? How does that help us get out of exile? Where's the role for the other brothers in this story? Because what we see in the, in the prophetic text, what we see in the book of Yechazkel is, I need, you need both the staff, says the prophet Yechazkel, you have to take the staff of, of Yehuda, God says to him, of Judah, of the brothers who sold Yosef into slavery, and the, the one of, of, of Yosef, of Ephraim, of, of, of Joseph, and bring them together. And that's how you bring connection. He can't get the Messianic era without both. And he can't even solve the problems of Greece, as we saw in Zachariah, until you have both. Where do they fit in? Where does each one fit in? How do these pieces come together? That we're going to have to learn about further. But let's just sum up what we've seen so far. We've seen that Hanukkah touches the light at the beginning of creation. And the struggle of Hanukkah goes into the world of darkness. We see this, the schism within the Jewish people that produced the Greek exile is parallel to the schism that broke up the family right at the beginning. We see that the rejection of Yosef or Joseph with all his beauty and charm was an attempt to reject the forces that can lead to idolatry and to the Greek exile. But somehow that was the wrong choice. Somehow Yosef and his forces are actually essential. So there's no simple solution. We need to find the right way to harness these forces. Somehow both sides need to be brought together, both the brothers and Joseph and Yosef, in order to bring out the Hanukkah story and in order to bring out the light that will help us survive the exile. Now we can already feel some of these attributes of Yosef or Joseph within each one of us. And there's no coincidence because what the the brothers and Yosef all represent are primal spiritual energies and powers that exist and operate in the psyche of each one of us, individually, collectively, nationally. So we're going to hear a lot of resonance of these things, which means the inner struggle that goes on within the Jewish people leading to Hanukkah is an inner struggle that happens within us too. The struggle between the brothers and Yosef is going to be a struggle we all experience all the time, personally, communally, family wise, everything, and nationally. And healing that and answering it gives us the Hanukkah story and gives us the way to shine light in all our lives. So there's a lot more still to learn. Hopefully this has been a benefit so far and hopefully we'll keep learning together in the future episodes.